Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Bevy, because there was a brand new release. Now Bevy is an open source game development framework, very uh, data driven, very cool project, probably the most successful Rust game development project out there right now. But before we get into it, I want to talk about something called a Friday afternoon news dump. Now if you work in the world of politics, or in the world of business, if you got some bad news to get out there, what you do is you release it on Friday afternoon. And the reason why you do this is because nobody is paying attention, everybody's off to the pub, or the way home, or if you're in Europe, probably asleep. So that's why Friday afternoons, at least North American time, that's when they dump all the bad news. And then you've got a couple of days for people to ignore it, and then Monday comes around, and hey, it was completely forgotten about. The reason why I mention this is because Bevy does all of their releases on Friday afternoons. It is so stupid. If you want people to actually pay attention to your product, maybe pick a different time, but especially don't release it on Black Friday. Like the Okay, so anyway, so that's why I'm talking about this release on Monday. There's just no point in covering Bevy releases when they come out because no one's paying attention. And Bevy team, if you're listening, please just go a day earlier. Do it on Thursday. Makes so much more sense. Anyways, back to Bevy itself. It's available at bevyengine.org. This is a data-driven ECS-based game framework. I call it a framework instead of an engine because there is no editor, comma, asterisk yet. Now we're going to notice in the news announcements today about the new release a lot more there about the editor. So this is a 2D, 3D game engine uh, got a fully programmable render graph it supports animation. It is cross-platform on Windows, Mac, Linux, web, iOS and Android. There is an entire UI layer on top of that including its own custom format for dealing with it. You do have uh, loading and saving of scenes there so everything there for building an engine is there including things like hot reload. So all they need to do now is actually create that engine. Now doing a little bit of foreshadowing and no there's no editor yet but give us some time you're going to notice that from today's announcement so the reason why we're talking about it today specifically I, well it would have been friday but once again friday night news dump doesn't make any sense to talk about it on friday so welcome to monday so bevy 0.15 was just released now there's a ton to it and to be honest a lot of this content uh is very technical if you were already using bevy if you're not using bevy yet probably not that important to you what they've changed so today I'm actually going to focus specifically on just two of the categories here. Two of the things I think that were kind of the most interesting. Although you do have some neat new things in here, like volumetric fog. We'll get back to that in just a second. So anyways, Bevy is 0.15 has been released. Uh, it's available up on crates.io. Uh, in terms of the tons of the highlights, so there's new features, new bug fixes, quality of life tweaks, and so on. But the highlight new features are required components. We will get back to required components in just a second because that is probably the um, most massive change in Bevy 015. Um, and then we've got entity picking and selection, animation improvements, generalized entity animation, animation mass, additive blending, and animation events. Curves. So there's a new curves trait, uh, cyclic splines, common easing functions, color gradient curves. You use curves for so many different things, so more better curve supports is always nice. Uh, improvements to reflections, so function reflection, unique reflect, remote type reflection. Uh, and then we've got the Bevy remote protocol. I'm going to talk about that one as well. It's a new protocol that allows external clients, such as editors, wink, wink, nod, nod, uh, to interact with running Bevy games. On top of that, we have visibility, bit mask, ambient occlusion. Uh, this is an improved G GTAO algorithm that improves ambient occlusion. I believe it's actually to the point where this algorithm just replaced the previous one. So you can think of this one as just having better ambient occlusion in this release. Uh, we also added chromatic aberration, a new post-processing effects that simulates lenses that fail to focus lights to a single point. Kind of funny that we simulate failure, but that's kind of what we were doing with things like chromatic aberration. Uh, it's one of those things, it can be a cool effect that can be abused so fast. It's sort of like the 90s lens flare. Um, and then we got volumetric fog improvements. So fog volumes that define where volumetric fog is rendered and what form it takes. Again, you can see an example of volumetric fog in action with this picture right here. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, all along with point light and spotlight compatibility. So there was volumetric fog added in 0.14. I, I guess technically it's 0.14. Uh, they added the new stuff in, but it didn't interact with all lights. So now it also interacts with point lights and spotlights. So volumetric fogs have improved and they've added those fog volumes there. 
And then order independent transparency. So a new opt-in transparency algorithm that improves the stability and the quality of transparent objects as their distance from the camera changes. Uh, so this is a way, I, I think this one boils down to like, if you want better wireframes, you can have this new transparency algorithm uh, and it will basically trade off performance for rendering quality there. Uh, they also improved their text rendering by switching to cosmic text for the text rendering, which improves their ability to render text, especially for non-Latin based languages that require font shaping and bi-directional text. Uh, they also turned it so that gamepads are now entities. Again, this is an entity based game engine. It uses an ECS system. So when things fit into that system better, that is a good move. So gamepads are now represented as entities, making them much easier to interact with. And then on the UI layer, uh, you now have support for renderable configuration shadow boxes it gives you the illusion of you know it, it makes your ui look less flat and boring and dull so that is it there's a ton more detail about all of these items if you head on through here uh, but again i'm going to focus on two specifically the first one is very hard to explain especially coming from me because i am not a rust developer uh, but i'm going to kind of give you the the tldr summary of things and the first one is required components so this is part of their next generation scene and UI effort. Again, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, back to the editor side of things, which aims to make Bevy a best-in-class app scene UI development framework. Require components stand on their own uh, as a direct improvement to Bevy developers' lives, but they also help set the stage for making Bevy's upcoming next generation scene system and the upcoming Bevy editor something truly special. So it's not even like a nod and a wink. It's coming. And I hope it's here soon. I hope it's very actively under development. But again, they've been doing a lot of the groundwork stuff for it. Uh, so we now have this thing called a required component. You can see it right there. So it enables developers to define which components uh, a given component needs. You can think of this in terms of inheritance as a way of saying has a. So you could say a car has a tire. So then a tire is a required component. The way they used to do things uh, was using um, these groups. I uh, believe they, we have a here, player bundle. So they used to do these player bundle sections. Um, and then this, now you're going to be able to basically just say, this requires this other entity. And then uh, it's going to really strip down the way the code works. A couple of the imp uh, improvements of required components uh, is they're effectively free. Uh, required components are only initialized and inserted if the caller did not insert them manually, no redundancy. Required components are inserted alongside the normal components, meaning for you ECS nerds out there, there are no additional archetype changes or table moves from the perspective. The required components version of the player, for example, is identical identical to the player bundle approach, which manually defines all of the components up front. So you used to use the player bundle to define these relationships. Now you can just use this new required functionality uh, and it will really streamline and strip down the code required. Uh, they're cached on the archetype graph, meaning computing what required components are necessary for a given type of insert only happens once. So here you can see an initialization process. So by um, by default, required components will use the default implementation for or impl for the component and fail to compile if one does not exist. Uh, so here you can see, for example, team red is the default value. So if you got player, player requires team. But if you do not specify team, it will default out to that one. And that can be overridden by passing in a function that returns the component. So here you can see blue team there returning team blue. And then they're saying require team, and then you're implementing it as blue team. And to save space, you can also pass it in as a closure, and you can see it in action there. I see again, it is kind of like inheritance. It's very much a form of inheritance actually here, but you can see that uh, it is, is a or has a. I think it was his. So it's expressed as a has a relationship, not an is a relationship. So uh, you can get inheritance is a is basically the class that you inherited from. So a person is a mammal. But again, a car has a tire. It's a different way of thinking of how relationships work. Um, and then bundles are continuing to exist. Uh, but what you're going to find is a ton of the things that were built with bundles before have been ported over. So uh, UI side of things you got there. Uh, so if you got, say, like a sprite now, it'll have a re required component of like transform uh, and so on. But you can see down here all of the things that they have switched over. Uh, there are a ton of things that have been moved over. So sprites, transforms, visibility, cameras, uh, meshes, uh, meshlets, lights, volumetric fog, scenes, audio, and so on. So this is definitely going to have a very integral effect on how things are structured. Uh, and you're no longer going to use bundles anymore. You will use retire required components to set up these relationships. Again, chromatic aberrations and these other graphical effects right there. But the other thing I want to quickly talk about 
Oh, also, they, they pulled in a third-party library that was previously often used for entity selecting. I don't think they mentioned that in the summary, uh, but they brought in this uh, mod, uh, this uh, ray casting mod for selecting objects, and you can see how to use it right there. Um, but the other thing I did want to talk about, you know, let me just pause till I find it, is this one right here, the Bevy Remote Protocol. So allows the ECS of a running Bevy application to be interacted with remotely. This can be used, for example, to inspect and edit entities and their components at runtime. Anticipate this will be used to create things like inspectors, which can monitor the contents of the ECS from a separate process. We're planning on using a BRP in the upcoming Bevy editor to communicate with remote Bevy apps. Generally, you can use BRP to get serialized values of a set of components from an entity, perform a query for all entities matching a set of components and retrieve the matching values, create a new entity with a a given set of component values for a given entity, insert or remove a set of components, despawn an entity, reparent one or more entities, list the components registered in the ECS or present on an entity. So uh, those are the two major things. I feel like they're both like fundamental plumbing things that are essential to that editor, which is getting mentioned multiple times. So I would love that to be there so I can stop saying that Bevy is a framework slash engine and just call it an engine. But yeah, that is the, the highlights of the Bevy 015 release. I do really, again, highly suggest stop releasing these things on a Friday and you will get, you know, more notice of your actual project. So ladies and gentlemen, Bevy 015 or 015, probably the most popular Rust game development project out there. Have you checked it out? Are you going to? Let me know in the comments down below. And let me also know, do you think, is it the editor that holds you back? Is it Rust that holds you back? Or have you already checked it out and thus nothing is holding you back? Let me know, comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.